Yes, he's one of the most recognisable players in all of football. He walks in the footsteps of legends with over 100 Premiership goals and holds the record for the most headed goals in the league's history. He's got a bit of an advantage, to be fair. Upon hanging up the boots, he's one of the nation's most loved and most listened to celebrities. Married to supermodel Abby Clancy, the absolute sort. But who is he really? Well, let Uncle Proper tickle your pickle and vinegar stroke your curiosity as we dive deep into the real history of the one and only Peter Crouch. Strap in. Oh, and it's Crouch. Peter Crouch. Born Peter James Crouch on the 30th of January 1981. Who's made that fucking picture? Cheeky bastard. Anyway, 1981 in Macclesfield, Cheshire. At just one year old, the Crouch family moved to Singapore through his father's work obligations, but swiftly moved back to the UK three years later, settling in Harrow on the Hill, an historic area where some of the greatest men of our time spent their childhood, including Sir Winston Churchill and uh, Peter Andre. He attended North Ealing Primary School where he found his love for the beautiful game. Ten years old he was a ball boy at Stamford Bridge, then excelled his abilities in Drayton Manor High School. Now I do love making documentaries on my channel about famous people and their life stories. It's especially exciting telling the tale when they have a tough upbringing, you know like a Mike Tyson or a 50 Cent. They fight for survival on the streets, doing unthinkable things to put food on the table, proper movie script stuff. But uh, with Crouchy, there weren't really much to go on, to be honest. He had quite a nice childhood, and you can tell that from his school photo. I mean, that is one happy fucker, isn't it? Now in 1994, a 13-year-old Crouchy was showing signs of great footballing feet and was scouted by the mighty Millwall, Chelsea and his well-loved team QPR, to which he chose the Rangers. But later that same year, the mighty Tottenham came calling for the new boy Wonder, signing him up to the youth team, where he nurtured his talent throughout most of his teenage years till he was signed professionally for the side in 1998. Oh yeah, 98, those were the glory years in the Premiership, weren't they? Look at all these legends, Sol Campbell, captain in Tottenham, Shearer at Newcastle, that nutty guard and known fucker, Dennis Wise for Chelsea, bloody love it. Uh, sorry. Yes, anyway, Crouchy looked to have hit the big time, but never actually made the first team. He had some brief loan spells at Dulwich Hamlet and IFK Halle Hosselholm. 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 Fuck no, some Swedish team. Until finally he was sold by Spurs to that club that was close to his heart, Queen's Park Rangers, in 2000 for 60 grand. He wasted no time making his mark. Not even 20 years old, he scored 10 goals for his well-loved team. A phenomenal showing for the season. Things were going great. Right. His footballing career had taken off and he was in pole position and... Oh yeah, no sorry, they got uh, relegated that season. And the Rangers needed the dough, so they sold off some star players. Portsmouth then snapped up the wiry prodigy for one and a half million in 2001. It was here under the watchful eye of Graham Ricks that Crouchy was tipped for big things, scoring a solid 18 goals in 37 games. Throughout this season, in many eyes, he was now ready for the Premiership. So Aston Villa bid five million for the striker, prompting him to join the Claret and Blue in March 2002. Bloody hell, he's only been on the pitch for two years. He's been jumping around like a fucking cricket. Anywho, Peter made his presence known by scoring on his home debut. He was off to a flyer, but the goals then suddenly dried up. 18 goalless appearances followed. His place in the team soon became uncertain, leading Villa to allow him on a three-month loan to Norwich. He's off again. The move did, however, kickstart his goal scoring once again, and he helped to guide Norwich to promotion. But at this time, he wondered if he was really good enough to compete at the highest level in the Premiership. Um, I always remember my debut was against Newcastle and Alan Shearer was up the other end of the pitch and I was at this end of the pitch, obviously the, the opposite striker. And I thought if that's what I need to be a Premier League player, I'm not one. <laughs> I'm not one. But Crouchy was not going down without a fight. He recalled the motivational words of them great men, his fellow Harrow boys. Yes, Winston Churchill, never, never, never give up. And similar words of wisdom from Sir Peter Andre. When I am tanned and in shape, I feel confident about my appearance. Fucking poetry. Maybe all he needed was a spray tan. Oh, shut up. No, you shut up. After briefly returning to Aston Villa, Southampton then put forward their interest and Crouch was on the move once again. Blimey, he must have gone to the estate agents more often than he went for a shit. So anyway, when he... Uh... Oh, that's quite a nice looking estate agent there. 
Actually, what is this video? Oh, bollocks, I didn't realise it was that. Oh, no, sorry, actually, I, d I don't even know what this video is. How did this get on my computer? Bloody hell. I've never seen this website before in my life. Oh, bollocks. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'll oh, forget it. Anyway, 2004. Crouchy worked very well with Southampton's new manager appointed that same year. The main man, Harry Redknapp. Who the fuck's that? Sorry, Harry Redknapp. And he found some fine form scoring a superb 16 goals in 33 appearances. The club were ultimately relegated. However, the impact he made got him another move to the highest level club that he had ever played for in the mighty Liverpool. But more importantly, he also received the call up to play for his fine country in 2005 with the World Cup looming the following year. It was all guns blazing for Crouchy. He was now living his dream playing for England. He was a striker for the Champions League winners. They said he's big, he's red, his feet stick out the bed. Peter Crouch, yes, yeah, superb. And he went on to score shit all. So he was cursed with a four month goal drought. But then he emerged with vengeance. His first goal was a thing of genius. A tactical pass against the defender's foot creating a lob shot and the goalkeeper thought, fuck knows what to do here. Bosh, straight in, beautiful. Then the goal started flowing, yes, love it. He helped Liverpool to lift some glorious silverware the following year in 2006 with an FA Cup win. And this is also the year he met his future wife, the double painting Abby Clancy, lucky bastard. He's had a raver there and he knows it. Yes. To be fair, I'm not the only one who thinks she's a weldy. Yeah. But along with all this, the stage was set for Pierre's biggest moment, the World Cup. Some solid showings in the qualifiers along with a goal in a friendly against Hungary giving birth to the robot. The England side had caressed the nipples of the nation. Germany 2006, Sven Goran Eriksson wags all over the bloody gaff. Crouchy and Rooney up front, what could possibly go wrong? Uh. The Lions scraped through with Crouchy scoring his first World Cup goal against Trinidad and Tobago. Oh yes, just look at that. It takes some serious talent to jump for a header while simultaneously holding onto another bloke's hair and spinning his head like a bloody yo-yo. Cheeky bastard. But it was another cheeky so-and-so that took a big shit all over our dreams. Oh, just look at him. Oh, oh, ref, can you send him off? Can you send him off? Oh, bloody hell, what are you going to do? Give Piers Morgan another ring? Oh, Piers, can I do an interview? Rooney hurt my Little football friend. Oh, look at me, I can blink with one eye. Oh, bloody grow up, you great big butt plug. Sorry. And then, along with our woeful effort in penalties, that same absolute donut went on to score the winning goal. A sad day for the English and a sad day for the Crouchmeister. Now it was back to Anfield, and the goals were flowing again. Another header scoring the winning goal for the Reds to take home the Community Shield. A narrow loss in the Champions League final where Milan got their revenge. Then a glorious day against the Gunners with a perfect hat-trick. This really did prove that although he had doubts at Aston Villa of his place in the Premiership, he was made for this league. However, the arrival of fresh strikers like Torres restricted his opportunities in the following years, so he made his way back to Portsmouth for a brief stint before then setting up camp with the team that he began his journey with, the mighty Spurs in July 2009, the same month that he got engaged to the lovely Abby Clancy. This time round he was a strong fixture in the Spurs lineup, a solid 24 goals as well as taking Tottenham to the Champions League for the first time, reaching the quarter-finals. He then decided to go full on Roy Bloody Keane, Bosh getting himself sent off only 14 minutes in. He went, you're fucking joking ref, what was wrong with them two tackles, I timed them perfectly. Have another look, only five minutes late, fucking liberty. They were knocked out by the saucy Spaniards, and not long after, Crouchy's time at Tottenham came to a sudden end through the ruthlessness of Daniel Levy. And, uh, hang on a minute, he looks like that bloke from The Mummy. Remember him? Anaxunamu. Uh, yeah, sorry, anyway. Yes, then a bid came in for 10 million from Stoke, and simultaneously goal scoring wizard Emmanuel Abu Dhabi was tipped to take the role of Crouchy. He still had a two year contract in place and was happy at the club, but it didn't matter because Imhotep said toodle fucking pip and paid him off to leave. So he did. 2011, he was off yet again to Stoke on Trent. Shit hole. Now just prior to this, Crouchy participated in his final World Cup reaching the final 16 and losing to the Germans, but he came home and married the absolute sort Abby. So it weren't all bad, was it? 
Look at his face, he's thinking, I've fucking cracked it, and I. They had their first child this year as well, and his fast pace on the move life seemed to be finally settling down. Stoke City proved to be the club where he could at last stay put, lasting a noble eight years for the Potters, driving in over 60 epic goals, and thanks to Colaccini, losing a few teeth. They are quite a big target to be fair. His days for England seem to be left behind, but with a second daughter born in 2015, he found a sense of contentment for his football and his family life combined. Then, at the start of 2019, he thought, ah oh, bollocks, I might as well have one more move. And he set up camp in Burnley, playing till the end of the season. Finally, on July the 12th, 2019, the mighty Peter Crouch announced his retirement from professional football. This man gave us some wonderful memories in the sport, an array of world-class goals and blood, sweat and tears for his country. Uh, and a bit of break dancing, apparently. This dynamo may have been one of the most unorthodox players to ever grace the pitch. Mind you, he looks pretty unorthodox, whatever he does, to be fair. But he had a beautiful eye for the beautiful game, and especially an eye for the back of the net. And, uh, yeah, that's about it, really. He's been pretty quiet since then, not really been doing much. Yes, of course, I'm talking waffle. The Crouchmaster is one of Britain's top podcasters. He's got his own festival, Crouchfest. He's a judge on the Masked Singer, which is fucking toilet. But Crouch is on it, so we're all over it. He's everywhere these days, and we ruddy love him. He's a proud family man to four lovely little ones and an all-round top bloke. What a ruddy legend, Sir Peter Crouch. This has been his story. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and I'll see you double soon. Bosh.